Okay, could you introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm a Cyprina, Cyprina Shubeso, yeah, uh, UFM professional coach. Yeah, with uh, long, long years uh, experience in, in football, both uh, in Europe and in Africa. Yeah. Now, I've known you quite a long time. You have been involved uh, as the former coach of South Sudan. What have you been doing since you were coaching them? When did you finish with South Sudan? Uh, my contract with South Sudan fin finishes that was uh, in September 2021. Yeah, I took a few months uh, break after that just to uh, re uh, Re uh, analyzed uh, our work, uh, re refresh myself, think uh, what we could have done better and how we could uh, yeah, uh, look into the future. So I went, I went to Cameroon uh, to watch the the African Nations Cup, which was very very exciting. Uh, so after that, I came back to England and uh, I thought to myself, okay, you've got some months off, you've had enough rest, you could start looking, uh, trying to get back into into a coaching uh, a coaching job or a new challenge. Uh, since then, I've been trying to, uh, I've spoken to a few federations, few clubs uh, in Africa, especially uh, in East Africa. Uh, which I'm still doing, but up to now, uh, I'm still looking for for a new, for a new challenge. Well, it's it's kind of surprising as uh, I've known you uh, as I said quite a while. You were involved as uh, the under twenty coach of Cameroon. You've now uh, added uh, South Sudan to that. How come you're not in football? This is a year now since you. Uh, finished at uh, <clears throat> South Sudan? Uh, I could I could say also uh, my first priority has always been uh, uh, for a couple of years now is to work uh, is to coach in Africa to try to develop football in Africa. Uh, in England I've had few uh, few coaching opportunities but I I didn't really want to tie myself down uh, because they were all in a youth development uh, reserve teams, uh, which I thought if if I get a club or a national team uh, in Africa, I could do more. I could, uh, with the knowledge that I've gained, I could uh, I could put that knowledge uh, in in place. I could develop things. Uh, I could probably go two head. Uh, ahead uh, on what we did in South Sudan, because when we went to South Sudan, there was basically uh, no structure, nothing. And uh, we have to uh, to put things in place, uh, some way try by errors, which, uh, which works out. Uh, I think with that experience, if I go to a new environment, uh, especially in Africa, I could do more. I could I could develop the, uh, the the institution, the environment, uh, the players, and everyone around. So uh, I see myself. I think uh, Africa needs me, and that that is why uh, I've tried to be patient uh, to to get a challenge uh, in, in Africa. Well, <clears throat> you introduced me to Engin. Firhat, and he managed to get a gig with um, the Kenya Football Association. He coached them for a while. He's nowhere near the same level that you're at. How did that make you feel? Uh, those, those things, if you look back, uh, okay, Engine is, is Firhat is, uh, is a very good friend, uh, friend of mine, which uh, we know ourselves very well. Uh, I think I, I quite remember before he got that that uh, that job, yeah, we did have a chat. It did, did give me a call. Uh, 
I was even surprised. He did ask me certain things about uh, the environment and everything. And I did explain. Uh, I did explain everything to uh, uh, to him. Uh, if I look back, because uh, uh, I I did talk to a few uh, uh, members of uh, of that federation. Yeah. And uh, the response, the response that I get from most of them was, uh, uh, we won't won't be able to uh, to get uh, to appoint someone, uh, say of your color, uh, in this uh, environment because uh, uh, probably uh, uh, the farms or the population they won't be. Uh, the, they won't welcome that. Uh, so they, 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 made, they made it clear that they, they, they prefer to go to, uh, for, for a European. But what I mean a European, I mean a white European. Uh, which, which those things, uh, when we look back, we have to accept. And uh, even though it's a little bit sad, where we we fight we fight for, for more than 15 years about trying to get that equality here, uh, here in England. I remember we start, we, we start, we start uh, all those, uh, we, we start those, uh, those charity uh, uh, to get everyone involved years back uh, with you and with Bush. But when you go back to Africa, you see the same thing, and they even throw it uh, onto you. Uh, it was sad, but that, that is the reality. You have to accept it and, uh, um, and move on and try to look somewhere else. So I think even after Kenya, there were other, other, uh, other clubs, other countries, which uh, uh, you can't really uh, go on and naming them. Uh, but that is what happened. And that is the situation that we are. So let me get this straight. You are saying that there are certain clubs and federations in Africa that will not employ you, not because of your football uh, abilities not being up to the uh, highest level, but because of the color of your skin and the fact that you are European based with that, uh, that color skin. So if you were African based, would the same thing be happening to you if you were in Africa, born and bred, I mean? If I, if I were in Africa, uh, I don't, I, it's, let's put it this way. Uh, if I'm coming from a different African country, they will never, even if you are highly qualified, they will, they will never appoint you. They will never give you that, that, that position. If you are from, from that country, okay. Uh, like in Cameroon, if I'm, if I'm, from, I'm from Cameroon, okay, they will, they will appoint you as a national, uh, national team head coach uh, because, because of your qualification, because of your, your knowledge. Uh, but uh, the way they make it clear, if you are coming from a different African country, they won't employ you. And that is the case, especially in East Africa. When you say East Africa, are you just talking about Sakapa countries or uh, the the ones bordering Sakapa countries as well. Uh, I think <laughs> East Africa as, as a whole, the majority of the of, of the East African countries. Yeah, uh, I I remember once Tanzania did appointed uh, this uh, the former uh, Nigerian national team player. Uh, Amanike. Yeah. Is it? They did give, give him a chance, and he did well. Yeah. Uh, but apart from that, you don't, you don't, you don't see any. Yeah. And I've I've spoken to most of the federation in East Africa, and uh, similar uh, similar response I get from them. 
which it, it has nothing to do with my level of qualification or my knowledge. And because some of those coaches that they, they appoint, uh, we got same qualification and uh, more knowledgeable than some of them. I think I could do more a better job because I, I understand the environment, the culture. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> Uh, I don't know exactly how to ask you this because uh, I don't want to get, put you in an awkward position. But which countries and clubs have you included in uh, your attempts to find work in Africa? Uh, I, th I think I've, I've, I've spoken to uh, to most of the East African Federation uh, from, uh, from Rwanda to Zambia. Uh, to, yeah. I've had a chat with them. Uh, uh, most most of the big clubs, uh, for example, like Gomaya, uh, before they appointed, before they appointed uh, the former Ugandan uh, head coach, yeah, I did have a chat with them. Yeah. And uh, I remember when I was with South Sudan, I did play against uh, Uganda. We played twice. Uh, they beat us once, we beat them once also. Yeah. But but you, you could you could see uh, how things how things work uh, in uh, in Africa. Uh, we both lost our job. We both lost our job. But uh, he 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 could he could get uh, the head coach job uh, the head coach uh, job with uh, with Go Maya very easily. Yeah. Uh <clears throat> Gomaya in particular has this had this problem because of the issues within the Kenyan Federation, the Kenyan government and FIFA. So they weren't even playing football. How is it they are not looking at what well, we need a decent coach and we need them now. We need the best available that we can get and that your name doesn't come up in that. Those are some of the uh, some of the questions. Uh, <laughs> Every uh, loving football fan uh, uh, will will ask, because I think, uh, especially with the work that I did with uh, South Sudan, and uh, even before South Sudan, I did, I did a great job with uh, with Cameroon with the under twenties, mm -hmm. where uh, I could I could take a step back, I could I could witness uh, Cameroon. Uh, Four, four of my players going for, to play for the World Cup. That was just 2018. So four years later, later on, those players are, are playing uh, the World Cup, which is which is a, a great achievement. So, which players are they? Sorry to interrupt you. The four you just uh, mentioned, who are they? What What's their names? Uh, we got uh, Umgwet. Yeah, we got Hongla Martin. Yeah, we got uh, Bazo Olivier. And we got uh, Ntolu, who is the left back. So four of them. Do you speak to Rigobert Song uh, about uh, these players? And did you recommend any since he took over as the uh, national coach of Cameroon? No, R R Rigo, Rigo knows very well about, about it. And... Uh, when I was under 20 uh, national team coach, uh, Rigo was with, uh, uh, with the local uh, national team. He was head coach of the local national team. And I think after that, uh, with the under 23s, which uh, from the under 20s, he did call some of those players uh, with the under 23s. So he knows, he knows. How do you feel <clears throat> about a situation like Paul Put? He is a European coach. He was involved in a match match fixing scandal in Belgium. Cannot get a job with the Belgian FA, and no Belgian club will employ him. But he finds work all over Africa. How do you feel about this? Uh, the the thing is, uh, you 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 feel let down by. Uh, 
by your own uh, your own continent. Yeah. Uh, because uh, those those appointing those uh, uh, those making those decisions, uh, they don't really look in, into the background. And even if they look into the backgrounds of those there that are, they are about to appoint, they don't really understand. And that is the case because they look into the CV of those coaches. Most, most of those committees members, they don't even understand where that coach, what club, what, what level, what is, uh, does that coach even have criminal record back home? Nobody check about that. No, no, no one is interested about that. Most of them, what they are interested is, okay, this coach come and sit with us. Uh, this, uh, we're going to give you that your two years contract. Yeah. What formation are you going to play? That is, that is what they will ask that coach. What formation? What has formation has to do with it when you are appointing a, a coach? Yeah. A national team coach comes in. Yeah. He, he will build that formation on on uh, on uh, the quality of the quality uh, and the players that he got. Yeah. But that that is how it goes in Africa. No one check check if those coaches got criminal record back background or what have they done in their, in their home countries. Yeah. Well, interesting that you mentioned that because in that particular case, Paul put, it actually went to the Belgian courts as well. And he got a, a, a sentence suspended, but he was convicted in relation to this match-fixing scandal. It came much later, but it has happened. And yeah. you'd look at this and sort of say, well, how's he getting work in Africa? <clears throat> since then, at least since the um, criminal case, he's had work with the uh, National Federation of Guinea, and he has also uh, been employed, a current employee with uh, the Republic of Congo, the, the oh, French, yes. French, yes. French colony. How do you feel about this going on, that the African federations surely must know this? And in this particular case, the Guinean federation sacked him, banned him for life, and then FIFA and CAS overturned it so that uh, he's allowed to. Now, some people are saying that it's because he had allegedly served his uh, punishment for the uh, match fixing. But the Guinean uh, Federation seemed to be saying something else. They had a different problem with them. No, uh, the, the thing is, if I, as an African, yeah, of African background, if I have a criminal, criminal record, yeah, where I did something in Africa, yeah, most clubs, most countries in Africa, they will never, they will never give me that chance. Even now, without, without a criminal record, without, with, uh, with uh, good knowledge in coaching, good background in coaching, they still don't give us that chance. So, if I had a criminal record, would they give me that chance? The answer is no. They won't even. Same thing here in Europe. If you if you if you have a criminal record, the chances of a club appointing you is very slim. Mm. Yeah. Well, that's kind of the point. Yeah. If you actually look at Paul Put himself, he cannot get work in his own country, i.e. Belgium. No, it, it's the, the chances are very slim of him getting a. Uh, Getting work in Belgium, mm -hmm. even though he has he has saved uh, probably he has saved his time, yeah. But the chances are very slim because he got a criminal background. There are some coaches who have um, got jobs, and in despite having these jobs, they're applying for other jobs. Should that be tolerated? Uh, I think that is lack of uh, professionalism uh, and uh, lack of respect to the institution or uh, to, to your present uh, employer. Uh, when you are in a job, you shouldn't be applying for another job. 
it, do, it doesn't make a, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, okay, you might have cases where a, another employer could uh, approach you through your employer, through your present employer. They give you the right now to speak to the new new club or new federation. That is as acceptable, but you can be in a job and be apply, applying for another job. It's lack of uh, respect uh, to your present employer, lack, lack of respect. If, if it's with the national team, it's lack of respect to the country, uh, to the people, which uh, it shouldn't be tolerated. And if it was a case of, you know another job has become, um, what's it, vacant, they haven't advertised for uh, candidates yet, but you contact them and say, I'm interested in the job. Should that be tolerated? No, it shouldn't. Where well, uh, if you are in a job, it shouldn't happen. There's lack of functionalism. What should the existing uh, employer be able to do about that? Should you be able to say, well, if that's your attitude, get out? No, I've, I've, I think uh, the employer has all the right to terminate your contract without, uh, uh, because it's, it's a gross uh, misconduct. Hmm. Yeah. So if a coach, just to clarify this, if a coach was the head coach of a, a national federation, he finds out there's a vacancy in another country with another national team at a higher level, let's say, and they haven't advertised the job, they haven't contacted him, and he unilaterally asks them to consider his CV. How should that be dealt with? That 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 is a gross misconduct. Yeah, the present uh, federation has to uh, terminate uh, that coach uh, uh, contract. Yeah, that is how the discipline has to. Uh, because immediately you start, immediately as a professional coach, uh, you start uh, talking with, with, with new, new employers, you start uh, uh, looking somewhere else. You are, you are no more than 100%. Would it surprise you to learn that the coach that did that is the current coach of the Republic of Congo, Paul Put, and that he did that to the Zambian Federation and they were not interested in him? Yeah, then I, uh, the thing is, I think uh, he got that job just a few months ago, not so. If I could look back, I think uh, he got that job. It's not. It's not even up to four months. It should be four or five months. I think he may have been in the post a bit longer, but the point is that he has yes. actually <clears throat> contacted the Zambian Federation, sending them his CV before they advertised that they were looking for people. You know, you have to advertise it and. Uh, sort of make it clear that uh, you know people can apply and then you consider whether you want it. He actually contacted them before they had uh, opened it up. No, I, I think that is unacceptable. Yeah, uh, Congo, they shouldn't accept that. It's gross misconduct and uh, it's lack, lack of respect uh, for, for the people, for the federation, yeah, for the institution. Now, let's say it had been a black coach that had done that. Would they have survived? They will, I think they would terminate the black coach uh, contract. Yeah, that, that, that is what will happen. There will be a lot of crit uh, criticism. And, uh, yeah. Now, <clears throat> you've mentioned, if I have it correct, that you feel you have been sidelined because you are not a local uh, uh, black man, for want of a better way of putting it. I mean, 
but uh, you can apply in Cameroon, you'll be considered. You can maybe get uh, one or two odd opportunities in Africa, but as a whole, you won't get looked at because you are not from that country. And worse than that, you're based in Europe, but blank. Yes, that, you, you got it right. Uh, it's not just that I'm based in Europe. Uh, they don't they don't so much look what I'm based in Europe or in Africa. Uh, it they look more in, into the color of my skin because I'm black. I'm not from that country. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the, it's difficult. It's difficult for them to appoint me because uh, probably uh, the fans or or uh, uh, those in charge of, of those clubs, they don't want, they will not be happy working with someone like me. Okay, but <clears throat> you've mentioned uh, that you think it's to do partly with, um, you don't get opportunities outside of the country of your origin. Pizzo Mosimani managed to uh, secure work with not just any club, but one of the best in Africa, if not the best in al Ahly, when he left South Africa. Do you think he would have any problems getting shortlisted for jobs if he wanted them? Uh, I think with Pizzo Mosimani, uh, be before him going out of South Africa, he, he did a lot of good, good work with clubs. In South Africa, yeah, uh, he was, I think, uh, almost every year with in calf competitions. So uh, most of most almost every African clubs uh, know, knew about him, yeah. but it, it took it took time, and uh, you could see when it, when he left South Africa, he went to Egypt. It, I haven't said. They don't give chances. One or two, yeah. But it's very, very, very. It's just a small group. It's probably five, five percent of African coaches. Now there has been some suggestion that the reason uh, Pizzo left Al Akli was because he wasn't fully accepted by. Egyptian fans of Al Akli. I'm not commenting on whether that's true or not, but there was certainly that perception. Do you find that that is a, a perception that uh, you would see all over Africa as well? And it would be even worse if it's happening to Pizzo, that it would be happening much worse to those who don't have his name and uh, his resume? Uh, I, I could agree with you because uh, it's, it's very common. And, uh... Uh, Africa at this moment uh, they haven't got to that point that to believe and to accept that they, their own could also be good or even far better than what they are bringing from, uh, from Europe mm -hmm. which uh, it might take time but I hope one day uh, they will realize that they got, they are also blessed with good coaches. Now, there's another example from uh, a lot earlier, which is the most successful coach in the history of the Africa Cup of Nations. You could say it's joint because only two of them have won it three times, but he won it three times in a row, which is unprecedented and probably will never happen again. <clears throat> I'm talking about Hassan Shafata. Now, yeah, he yeah, does yeah. not get uh, the recognition even within Africa. I mean, you know, in football circles, you yes. can't say you don't respect Hassan Shafata in Africa because, you know, people will look at you and say, are you crazy? But <clears throat> look at the work that Hassan Shafata has got after that Egypt job. And it is not fitting for a coach of that standing. And there's another example in that he badly wanted to go and coach at the World Cup. He and Nigeria were looking at him, but they went for the Swede, Lars Lagerback. 
Now, that's not saying Lagerbach is not a good coach. He is a good coach. But what did he know about African football? What did he know about Nigerian football? How could he compare to Shahata at that stage in their careers? Yeah, it just it just, it just goes goes back to uh, those uh, decision makers, uh, uh, Satish, uh, because uh, I think they are they are the big problem in African football. Yeah, because they are the one calling the shot. They are the one making those uh, those decisions. Who who to bring in? Who to hire? Who to hire? What what resources to put in? Yeah. Uh, let's just take example with Samuel Eto. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Cameroon could have brought whatever European coach uh, uh, they, they, they wish to get. But what did he do? He decided to go with home based uh, coach with uh, Rico Besso. It's not. It's not like Rico Bess is, is the best coach that uh, Cameroon got. There are better coaches than Rico Bess, but he stick with Rico Bess because he knows uh, the goal that they got in front of them. Yeah, he knows with Rico Bess they will be able to achieve those goals. And because of his leadership, he has put a lot of money in Cameroon football, where even the leagues, the Cameroon local leagues, they are just booming. Now you go to the stadium, you get about 27,000 spectators. Where before you don't get that, before you get probably 500 or 1,000 spectators in the stadium. Yeah. So it goes back. To, uh, to decision makers. Does that make those decisions? One of the things with that, you've mentioned uh, Samuel Etu and Rigobert Song. His assistant, or at least one of the assistants, is Sebastian Minier, a Frenchman who has uh, coached. He's got some uh, experience within Africa. Did you know he applied for the Zambia job and was shortlisted in the top ten, in the uh, final 10? Uh I read about that. Uh, I think it goes back. That is, uh, I ask myself, you are with, you are the assistant coach of Cameroon. Cameroon is one of the powerhouse football in Africa. Uh, everyone knows Cameroon all over the world. It's one of the powerhouse, even in world football. You are the assistant coach. You are going to the World Cup. Why should you be? For me, that is greediness, or we call it that greediness or foolishness. How can you? You are going to the World Cup, which is the pinnacle of football, yeah. and you are going to apply to, to be the the head coach of Zambia. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Sorry, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Okay. So when when I saw it and I I thought is is this really true? Did he really apply for that job or someone just put down his name? Uh, those no, are questions. He, that he has applied. He was actually, uh, as far as I'm aware, he was one of those who was shortlisted in the top ten and was interviewed for the uh, Zambia job. Yeah, I, I think in that case, uh, so, uh, the Samuel Eto has 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 to set in some discipline because that is totally lack of discipline, lack of respect uh, to the people of Cameroon. Do, do people in Cameroon know this has happened? Uh, I. I read, I, I remember I read through uh, some of the Cameroon uh, uh, newspapers the first time I saw it. So I think they should be aware. Yeah. But it, it hasn't been highlighted in Cameroon that uh, the assistant coach applied for the job in uh, the vacant job in Zambia and was shortlisted. And uh, I believe he was interviewed about it. He certainly is in the top 10. There's absolutely no question he was one of the 10. Uh, well, it became 11 because they extended it for Gernot Raw. 
but he's not attached to anyone, so it's perfectly fair enough that he can uh, get it raw and apply. I, I, I don't. I don't think uh, the Federation, Cabo Federation, knows about that, uh, because someone has to tell someone. I don't think uh, he knows about that. Uh, probably the journalists do bring that up. Who do you suggest should uh, tell them? I mean, I'm telling you for a fact this has happened. There is yeah, no doubt he was in the top 10. Yeah. I think, uh, I think of the, the 10 that were considered for uh, the job. Well, 11 if you count going at Raw as well. Yeah, I think uh, the journalists, uh, they, they will bring that up somewhere. One day they'll bring that up. Yeah. I think probably uh, if they haven't brought that up because they are just. Uh, uh, keeping things uh, uh, a little bit underneath, so so the team should should carry on with uh, mm. with the preparation for the World Cup. Well, that was what I was going to ask you next, which is if this came out, would it affect Cameroon's preparations for the World Cup? Yeah, I, th I think it's going it's going to affect uh, every time uh, uh, preparing for a major tournament and. Uh, you have to let go one of the coaching staff or or technical team. Yeah, it always uh, it always bring a little bit of uh, disruption. Uh, yeah, why not? They, I think uh, they will feel the the effect. He was the assistant coach, uh, which means uh, he had a lot of responsibilities also. What do you think should be done about this? Should it wait until after the World Cup or should they just deal with it now? Uh, I think I, th for, I think they should be patient and they wait after the World Cup uh, and see how things go uh, during the World Cup. Yeah. And then the, the, the president could take, could either decide I'd have to terminate his contract even while the World Cup is, is going on. If we have a good World Cup, yeah, you might you might let that go. You might put that under the carpet. But if things are not going uh, in the right direction, then uh, yeah. If you had done that as coach of uh, South Sudan, that uh, you had seen there was another job offered uh, and or was available and you had applied for it, um, what would you expect the South Sudan Federation to do about it? Uh, in my case, I don't think I will ever, I will, I will ever uh, even have an idea of doing such things. I don't see myself uh, yet uh, in a job. If, if, I don't, if I don't enjoy, if I don't enjoy my my present job, if I if I'm not happy, yet yeah, I sit down. I sit down with my employer. Yeah, we 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 speak face to face. Uh, we try to get a compromise, and uh, yeah, it's better I leave that job and then start looking for another job. I don't see myself being in a, in a job, and then. <laughs> Applying for other jobs? No, it's not my it's not my thing. With the information you have provided today about you know why you think you're not getting uh, shortlisted and your experiences of it, what do you want to see CAF do to protect up and coming black coaches, African coaches like yourself? Uh, I, I I think there is there's very little CAF could do in that domain uh, because uh, I could see okay if you look back the past uh, ten years CAF has CAF has done enough by improving the coaching education and uh, uh, in Africa uh, which is already good which means we got good coaches in Africa uh, CAF could just probably try to uh, uh, I, I can't. I can't say put put uh, uh, rules or regulations that no, because uh, employing a coach 
is left to uh, individual federations, individual clubs. Uh, they decide who they want uh, they want to employ. So it's 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 a difficult one. It's a difficult one uh, for a sub calf could bring in certain roles that at least in every in every coaching position at least uh, they should be able to uh, interview. Yeah, if there are three candidates, we should at least get at least one or two candidates should be black. Have you ever heard of a thing called the Rooney Rule? Yeah, we got it here in England. Right. Do you think that is the solution, that you should have a Rooney Rule for all appointments within African football coach, at a coaching level? I think that, that, that could help. That, that could help. Yeah. Which means uh, uh, there is an a quota that in every uh, coaching position you must at least have uh, this number of black coaches. I think I think that, that that could help. But the problem with that, given your experience, is that they could the clubs and the countries could say, "But we are employ uh, adopting the Rooney Rule. We are giving uh, opportunities to black coaches. It's just they happen to be." all in our country. We don't give opportunities to coaches out from outside of our country. So it would it even help you if they had a Rooney rule? Uh, if, if it, okay, look, look at it. Look at the case of, uh, of Zambia. Yeah, they got uh, 10 shortlisted. How many are Blacks? Two. Mm -hmm. What does that tell us? Tells us? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Zamb that is a job opportunity in Africa. Yeah. And you got just two black coaches shortlisted in, in 10, not even half, not even 50%. Both of them were Zambians. Yeah. And they're now in the top three. It's uh, said to be between those two and Abram Grant for the uh, top job. But my point is, let's say you have a Rooney rule. Take the Zambian example for a, uh, a moment. The Zambian FA would be able to say, what are you complaining about? We have given opportunities to uh, black coaches, but they're Zambians. That's our choice. We want the Zambian, you know, we want them. We can justify it by saying, if anybody is going to know Zambian football, it's going to be the Zambian coaches. So we have every right to uh, focus on them. And if you have the Rooney rule, they would be able to say, well, here you are. Black, you know, we are giving opportunities to black people. What are you complaining about? No, I think I think with the Rooney rules, uh, so, so, so far they meet that, uh, that, that number of blacks, that should be interviewed for that job or put that is that is okay mm -hmm. yeah no no one is going to complain the, don't forget this job opportunity they are mostly in africa mm -hmm. yeah at least you should you should get at least 60 percent of those interviewing those jobs africans mm -hmm. that is how it's supposed to, you should get at least 60 percent we don't say 100% or 80%, but at least 60% should be African coaches. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mind if they are coming from, uh, from Chad, from South Africa, from uh, Morocco, uh, from Egypt, but at least 60% should be African coaches. I think that will pave a way and that will give more opportunities. Yeah. You mentioned coach education earlier isn't that part of the problem that coach education schemes haven't fully developed the uh, young african talent to give them the opportunities to apply for these jobs uh i don't think so i think uh, uh CAF has been doing a uh, tremendous brilliant uh coaching ed uh, ed ed education with last 
five, seven years. Things have really changed in Africa. We, they've built up, uh, got coaches, most of the coaches with uh, CAF A, even CAF Pro license, now in Africa. And then add onto that, you got a lot of ex-professional players from Europe with good coaching background. I give I give you an example. You got when you have someone like uh, Kolo uh, Touré. He's the assistant coach of uh, Leicester City. If he wants to get a job in Africa now, no one is going to to give him that job because I I what I know from what I'm saying because he would wants he would like to probably take. A national team job in Africa, hey, it's not easy yeah. for him to get those jobs. Yeah. He was he was hoping even to get like Ivory Coast job as a national team coach. But they will put him aside and they'll still bring someone, a European, that is out of job here in Europe can't even get into uh, a, third, a third division club in Europe. And they will, give, they will give that European the opportunity. That is the mentality that we need. We need to eradicate from those decision makers in Africa. Almost 15 years ago, I had an interview with the late, great Cecil Jones, I took a few. And this is almost word for word what he was saying that even he was finding difficulty getting jobs in africa this is a man who had won the african treble who was one of the great players in uh, ghanaian football and had shown that he had what it took as a coach because he was the first to qualify benin for the uh, africa cup of nations but he was saying the conditions that he encountered as a coach was completely different to the way a white coach would be treated. <laughs> From what you're saying, this seems to be a case of very little has changed at the top level. No, I think it's something very, very little has changed. Uh, if let's let's look, uh, for example, you've got countries like Senegal, like Cameroon. Uh, where Senegal is still with uh, Alum CC uh, for almost seven years. Yeah. Because they, they believe they did believe in their project. Uh, the decision makers, they believe that was the right way. And, and that has paid off. Because before then, Senegal was struggling. Senegal had so many uh, European coaches. They were struggling. They were nowhere in African football. They, oh, sorry, go they, on. They, they, had, they had all, I don't know, they, they had all, all the top players playing in Europe by then. But they still struggle. But from since this time, everything has been organized. The discipline is there. You could see. It's someone he he understand the culture, the environment, yeah. the results are there. Yeah. To sum up, you've been out of football coaching and management for a year now. What do you want to see done so that coaches like you don't get sort of cast on the scrap heap and ignored? when you have and want to offer uh, so much to African football? Uh, I, I, I think uh, those decision makers in Africa, they should uh, uh, understand that uh, we, we have same, uh, same uh, uh, qualifications, same knowledge, uh, we even have that extra because we understand uh, the environment and the culture and how things are. We've, we've lived there, we've 
uh, we've seen it, we've done it. Yeah. They need to give us that opportunity. Yeah. They, they need to give us that opportunity and they need to support us. All what we're asking is at least get us even in the final list. Sit down with us. Yeah. Ask the same question you want to ask to those uh, to the Europeans, and see if we could come up with good projects. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Uh, I, I I think I'm I'm not. Uh, it's not like I'm uh, I'm complaining or no. I just I just want to see things changing for the better. Yeah. Not only, not about me, but about the next generation, the future coaches, because we've got a lot of young, talented coaches coming up uh, in Africa. But we need to give them the chance. Yeah. If we don't give them those chances, how, how are they going to get better? We need to give them that opportunity. And I think uh, it will always be good for African football. Thank you very much. You're welcome.